What's up, YouTube? We're back with another episode of What the Hell Am I Doing? And this week we're doing more picks because last week, sorry guys, it was correct again. Three for three. Um, I guess there's no surprise there. Sometimes I'm just right, and that's why I'm the champ. But in all seriousness, um, you know, some of those fights, I guess, were gimmies. Um, I thought Maya might have put up a, a bit of a bigger fight against uh, Bilal Muhammad. Um, but in the end, you know, his age is getting there, up there. And uh, his durability just isn't the same as it was. And when things get tough, he can only go for so long. And if things don't work out for him, um, he falls behind quickly. And uh, that's what happened. You know, for a little bit, it was, it was competitive. But, you know, Bilal took over and uh, ultimately won the fight. Um, Diaz, you know... Nate Diaz almost won that fight in the end there. I mean, he wasn't really almost going to win, but uh, he was getting dominated from an outclass for most of the fight, which was, you know, something I wasn't sure of. Um, you know, it wasn't much different than the performance that he had against Masvidal. You know, he's been away from the game for a long time, you know, so you don't know what to expect. He's, you know, had a couple fights in a few years, and, you know, he's only had like three fights in five years. So it's hard to, to figure out what what to expect from a guy, especially as he's, you know, going through his 30s, you know, some guys decline at that point, and, you know, when you don't, when you don't see them declining gradually, you don't know what to expect, and, uh, you know, Nate can still bring it, he's still got the hands sometimes, but the problem is, is that people keep kicking the shit out of his legs, and as long as you do that, he, he can't get off his punches, he can't do what he wants to do with his hands, and, um, he seems unable or unwilling to, to defend the leg kicks until it's too late. Um, and that's been some of his downfalls lately, uh, including the fight with Leon Edwards. Leon, you know, had a good plan. He played it a little safe. Um, he got caught at the end there, you know. He, he made, got him the stocked and slapped and then a good shot right to the jaw. And, you know, he had him hurt. hurt had him hurt bad. And if Nate had not pointed at him and laughed and maybe taken his time to jump on him, you know, if he had pounced immediately, he could have maybe stolen that fight. But, um, you know, even the few seconds that were lost there and the gradual amount of time they added up as so he was chasing him around afterwards, um, you know, I think a big opportunity to steal the fight ended up being pissed away. And, uh, you know, it sucks, but, you know, that happens. You know, that's Nate will have some stock from this fight because of that moment, and uh, that's why people like to watch a fight win or lose. So, um, you know, it was a good fight. Edwards deserved to win. But that moment might have taken away his title shot chances. Um, and in the main event, you know, Adesanya, you know, he kind of played it safe. He was nullified early. He was in, the, he was in trouble. Um, but, you know, once he got out of that situation, um, his gas tank took over and his ability to avoid trouble won him the fight. And uh, the ending was predictable. And, um, well, there you have it. I'm three for three on the card. So tonight we're going to switch it up a bit. We're going to pick some boxing fights. There might be a couple of gimmies here, but I, I, I'm going to pick one that I want to happen regardless of what, what should happen. And, uh, you know, you guys are probably going to get some fun out of that. So uh, tonight we're going to pick three fights. Uh, we'll start with the Jamie Mungia fight. He's fighting uh, Camille Samerda, um, who's a Polish fighter. He's filling in late um, uh, as, as an opponent, uh, as uh, Mungia's original opponent went down with an injury. So this is the second time. Uh, that fight was to be delayed, and uh, Zmurda stepped up and took the uh, took the spot so this fight could go on. Um, his last fight was against, I think, Triple G, which was, I think, in December or November. And, um, you know, Triple G had a good fight against him. Zmurda was a bit of an opponent, I guess, as I would call it. Um, so, you know, tonight, it's not going to be much different, I don't think. Sometimes when opponents get changed, things can get weird. But Munguia is the real deal. Uh, the guy's got hands. He's, he's, he's young. He's growing every fight. So I think Munguia should probably knock this guy out tonight. And uh, I'm going to bet um, I'm gonna bet on Munguia winning. I'm going to bet on Munguia winning by knockout. Hopefully. And, uh, you know, let's see what he does. I think he should win. Uh, and then moving on to the next fight, it's going to be Jermel Charlo. And he's fighting Juan uh, 
Mont Montiel, Montiel, I think his name is Juan Montiel. Um, you know, Charlo and his brother Jermel Charlo, they're, they're, they're pretty fantastic. Um, they're definitely part of uh, a growing sport right now, and these guys were definitely a future and now becoming the current, you know, of, the, of their uh, division. I believe they're middleweights. Um, so many weight classes, so I forget. Um, but, you know, both Charlo brothers are, are very relevant in the game right now, and uh, Jamal is probably going to put on a show tonight, I think. Um, his fights are usually interesting. Both their fights are usually interesting. Um, and, and Jamel is fighting next month. So we'll talk about him next month. But both of them, are, you know, put on good shows, and both of them have great hands and great movement. And uh, I think I think Jamel is going to win tonight. I think he's going to he's going to win by knockout, probably with inside six rounds. Um, so I'm going to bet uh, I'm going to bet uh, a square of the Chili Cherry Nightmare on Jamal Charlo winning tonight. And I don't think I said what I would do for punishment. So for for the Mungia fight, I will also bet. Um, Mungia, you know, I think Mungia is so good that I'll bet a quarter dropper of the uh, Death Shots Challenge, the 33 Reapers Death Shots. I'll bet that on Jamie Mungia winning that fight. Uh, that's how confident I am that Jamie Mungia will win. Um, so... Sorry about that. I'm jumping all over the place. I forgot to mention the punishment on the first pick. So Jamie Munguia, I will pick to win. Uh, and I will bet a, a quarter dropper of the 33 Reaper death shots if Munguia were to lose. If Jermel Charlo loses tonight, I will bet one square of the Chili Cherry Nightmare on him. Now this is the crazy pick. This is the last pick I'm going to do. And this is because I'm a fanboy and I admit it. Uh, Anderson Silva is a hero of mine in, in the fight game. He, he, to me, is one of the greatest I've ever seen in my generation live. You know, I've seen Muhammad Ali fight on tape. I've seen young George Foreman. I saw a comeback George Foreman live. Um, you know, I saw a lot of good things growing up, and I saw a lot of great fighters like uh, Oscar De La Hoya. I saw all of Floyd Mayweather's career. Um, you know, I saw most of Bernard Hopkins and all of Roy Jones' career. Vander Holyfield, I saw most of. Like, I've seen a lot of great names. And, um, um, you know, a lot of them are legends to me. And, and some of them are top five to me. But Anderson Silva is, you know, he's like the Muhammad Ali, I think, of all the fighters I've seen of my generation. Just because of what he could do in MMA, his abilities were just in a different world and he had so many memorable moments and so many highlight reel moments that are just, no one else will do those. Um, but uh, I feel really lucky that I got to see all that happen. I named my dog after him. Anderson the Beagle is named after Anderson Silva the Fighter. That's a true fact. Um, but yeah, and I'm a big fanboy, and uh, you know, Julio Cesar Chavez, you know, Jr., um, He's the son of a legend. His father, I watched his father fight in the 90s, and I think he retired like 16 years ago. Uh, you know, I watched his father fight, and I remember Hector Camacho. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, Julio Cesar is one of those boxing sons that didn't live up to the name. A lot of them do, um, but he didn't. You know, he has a record that looks good on paper. But when I remember, think of Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., I think of disappointment. He is not a legend like his father. Um, he's missed weight multiple times. He missed weight yesterday. Um, he's failed drug tests. He's quit on the bench. He's been not ready. He's just, you know, he's had a lot of disappointing moments that um, you don't expect from a guy with a name as heavy as Chavez Jr. Or as Chavez, sorry. Um, so, and you can see it on his father's face in a lot of these fights when they end badly. You can see how disappointed he is. His father's a true warrior and a true Mexican legend. It's a Mexican, I believe they're Mexican. If they're not, I apologize. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, um, you can see it on his father's face. <laughs> you can see the disappointment. This is a fight. This is any other fighter other than Anderson Silva. I'd be leaning with the boxer. I think the boxer and a boxing foot match should win. They're going to have the superior hands and everything else. But Anderson is a guy that's interesting because he can move. And he did have good 
movement and striking abilities in MMA. Yes, his kicks won't be there and his knees and a lot of things that he utilized won't be there. But he was a great guy at jabbing. He was great at moving in and out. He came in at awkward angles. He could land devastating body shots. I think Chavez coming in four pounds overweight is a bad sign. I think Chavez is lazy. And I think Anderson might surprise him. Even though Anderson's 46, I think now, or almost 46, you know, he shouldn't win. And I know he shouldn't win. But something tells me he's going to surprise him because Anderson is still special. And Chavez is a bit of a bum that has a great name. So I'm going to bet one square of the Chili Cherry Nightmare. And this is the crazy bet because it shouldn't happen. But I'm going to pick him. I'm picking Anderson Silva to win the fight tonight because he's one of the best I've ever seen. And sometimes the champ has to stand behind one of the greatest. doesn't matter what the outcome really is. The fact he's taken on that fight at this age, that's impressive. I wanted to see him fight Roy Jones when he wanted that fight. Um... I think it's going to be interesting. I think his movement and, and punches will make this an interesting fight. And um, Chavez better be ready for a real fight because if he's not ready, he's going to lose. And that's why I'm picking Anderson Silva. So once again, I'm picking Jamie Munguia. I'm going to bet uh, the dash shots on him. I'm going to pick Jamal Charlo. I'm betting a square of the Chili Cherry Nightmare on him. And I'm betting Anderson Silva, uh, one Chili Cherry Nightmare square on him. So we'll see what happens. You guys watch the fights or tune in next week and see what happens. You know, if I lose, there's going to be some punishment. And unfortunately, the review I was hoping I could do this week, the one I'm excited about that came up out of nowhere, uh, it didn't arrive yet. So that review is not going to happen. So um, stay tuned for the other review that I've been talking about. And um, I think I'm going to have to do a garden update soon because, holy crap, things have changed. Anyways, make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button. Comment. I want to talk to all of you. Check out last week's video. Check out this video here. And tune in next week to see if there's a punishment or if something else is going on. We'll see you soon.